semen retention, body gains, and dealing with low vibing, narcissistic parents. How do you deal with low vibing, narcissistic parents? I'm not talking about all parents out there. You might have a strict father or a strict mother, a God fearing mother and God fearing father. I'm not talking about them. They might only want to see the best for you. So they give you your chores. This is what's going to make you a damn man. I'm not talking about those parents. I'm talking about the real lie, narcissistic, gaslighting parents. How do you deal with them and still be in God's good grace? Because just because they're narcissistic, gaslighting, a lot of them are NPCs because NPCs can have children. Although they are those type of people, Exodus chapter 20, verse 12, and Ephesians chapter 6, Verse two through three says, honor your father and your mother. You hear what I'm saying? It doesn't say honor them if they're God fearing, honor them if they don't smoke crack. Okay, you can honor them, but you don't have to honor them if they're a narcissist. No, you have to honor your mother and your father. So, I mean, what do you mean, man? Do you mean that I got to just get picked on? Do I always got to be the scapegoat or the black sheep? No, you don't. But somebody on this planet, you have to give a pass to. Even the mafia give a pass to their parents, man. You hear what I'm saying now? This big, bad mafia, Italian mafia guy, he'll shoot up everybody. But he know, he know this rule, man. This is, this is law. Back in the days in the Old Testament before Jesus came and all that, if a person disrespect their parents, it was punishable by death. Yeah. And guess what? It still haven't changed, man. That's why it says if you want your days to be longer, then honor your mother and your father. And that's that. So what do you do? How do you win? You win by giving them a pass, by praying for them. Now, if there's anybody on this planet that you want to pray for, it's, it's going to be your parents, right? If they the low down, dirtiest, narcissistic, you still going to want to pray for them, right? Now, you ain't got to participate in the Thanksgivings. You don't got to participate in all of the long phone calls. And if they're narcissistic, I sure won't be telling them my ideas, my hopes, and my dreams. Because it's just going to be disappointment. How you deal with them is you pray for them and you see exactly what you're dealing with and then you treat it like it is. You hear what I'm saying? I'm not going to I'm not going to expect a narcissist to tell me that I did a good job. So when the narcissist don't tell me that I did a good job, I don't even trip because I expected this person to, to not tell me that. I expected this person to belittle me. I expected this person to come and, and, and Hoover, do the Hoover and the love bombing. And as soon as I get comfortable, they either they either ghost me, leave me in limbo, or just totally change on some Judas. I'm used to that. So if it ever happens, I don't get upset. Because I'm not looking at a narcissistic parent how the program wants me to look at it. Oh, mama knows best. Uh-uh, mama said it. Uh-uh, I gotta, I gotta obey mama and honor mama and daddy and I got to do what they say or God is going to be mad at me. 
No, if you disrespect your parents, if you if you if you do that Jerry Springer on your parents, people be cussing their parents out, man, fighting their parents. When the solution is to walk away and do your thing to get better while you praying for them. If you ever up in their presence, then you know that you're in the presence of a narcissist. You know you're not in the presence of a sweet, sweet old chocolate chip baking grandmama. You hear what I'm saying? But if you try to make something be that ain't, if you try to make this mother that's supposed to love you, because that's what the program says. Your mother is supposed to love you. Your father is supposed to love you. They're supposed to guide you in the right direction. If you disobey them, then you're going to hell. That's that's what the program says. So we try to we try to make it right, like how the program say, the whole time some of these damn parents are narcissistic and they really can't stand us. The moment that you see it like that, then you start handling it like that. You hear what I'm saying? <laughs> that's how you start handling it. So that's what you want to do, man. And I'm going to tell you why you want to do this. You want to pray for your parents and you want to let it go. Forgive and for, just forget about it, man. Go and be successful. That's how you're going to defeat. That's the only way, man. You can't fight them. You can't bite them. You can't cuss them out. You can't do that. And I'm going to tell you why you can't do that. Because if your gaslighting mother, let's say your gaslighting mother, narcissistic mother, if she's a witch, remember I told you a lot of witches read the Bible and stuff, man. If she's a witch and she know Exodus chapter 20, verse 12, if she know that, and there's, there's, there's eight, there's eight, there's eight verses in the Bible that talks about honoring your mother and father. If she know about Ephesians chapter six, verse two through three, if she know that and she, 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 um, initiate your death, a per listen, she, that person can initiate your, your, your bad luck and your, Yo, curse and stuff. Okay, look, right? Your parent can, if there's if they're a narcissist and they know these scriptures, they know that if you cuss them out and get mad, upset, break plates and all that, you cursed. No matter what they did, now they gonna have to deal with God on another times in another way, but you're absorbing all of that. They could just be sitting up there looking at you like, look, he just cursing himself, cussing me out, because he don't know the rules. If I was him, I'd just walk away and leave it be and still keep that energy. Because the more my son cuss me out the more he's going to be cursed because if these scriptures ain't true and they don't come to pass like the most high say, then all of this is fake, man. All of this Bible and all of this stuff is fake. If you could sit up and you could curse your parents out, even if they're narcissists, even if they came in your room and, and threw away all your nudie magazines and your weed, man. Even if they did that and you cuss them out, you, ha you have to pay, man. And if you don't pay, then this whole Bible stuff is fake. And this whole Bible stuff ain't fake. So there you have it. This is why you have to forgive. Especially your narcissistic gaslighting. Sometimes NPC, because NPCs can have kids. Parents, 
you got to forgive them because this could be this could be a, a, a witchcraft on you. I'm going to pick with, I'm going to pick on my son or my daughter, do little things, gaslight them in different ways, and as soon as they react, as soon as they curse me out, you hear what I'm saying? Then, then I'm going to get them. And let me tell you something so cold. Here goes some wordplay for you, some, some witchcraft wordplay. They don't even have to sin to get you. You would think that they sinned. Let me, let me tell you, let me put you up on some game before I leave, right? So the Bible says, Thou shall not lie, right? You, you shouldn't lie, okay? And you shouldn't persecute somebody who's telling the truth, okay? So, 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 so let me show you how the witches can use this. You shouldn't lie and you shouldn't persecute nobody that's telling the truth. Okay, let me tell you how a witch got me got my energy and all of that off of those two scriptures, <laughs> off of those two rules in the Bible, and I broke them without even knowing. Okay, I'm in the gym, and I'm all swollen stuff, and it's a group of witches over there. This is up in Gold's Gym. This is like probably like 12 years ago. I learned it the hard way. Um they was always playing like they was cool and stuff. They was some brothers. They was from a coven. They was um it was more it was more melanated people up in this coven. And the oldest one, when I went by the group, he was like, Hey, come here. And then I came. I'm like, what's up? And then he was like, Hey, you got big, you got a big body, man. Real big, swole body, but you got a little brain. And then they started laughing, and I immediately got upset. I was like, man, what you talking about, man? I got a big brain, fool. And I started saying all this, and they started looking down at the ground like, like they didn't want to give me eye contact. They was like, dang. And he was like, man, you do got a little brain and a big body, man. And I was just so upset, man, because I'm thinking that he calling me stupid and all of that. And they won that one. That would like about two days later, I got this real bad sciatic pain and I couldn't come to the gym for like two weeks. They got me. And how did they get me? Through the wordplay. He was telling the truth. I do got a big body and I do got a small brain. A brain isn't, okay, if you really think about it, this is the wordplay. If you really think about it, compared to your whole body, your brain is small. I mean, a brain isn't as big as a watermelon. The brain isn't as big as a car or an airplane. Your brain isn't as big as Jupiter. Your brain is a small, a small thing. And he even held his hand up his two hands up to the size of a brain when he said it. So he was telling the truth. And what did I do? I, 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 um, I shot down a person who was telling the truth. I sinned. He made me sin. These are the little bitty things up in the witchcraft. So I'm saying that your parents don't even have to say nothing blatant for you to to curse yourself if they're really trying to have you curse yourself a gaslighting parent a narcissistic parent you hear what i'm saying if they're really wanting your energy to suppress you or sacrifice you or whatever they have planned for you they could use this word magic just 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 you just got to know how to use the words man they could use this word magic and you will be yelling at them and you will be the one in the wrong. And it'll sound like something else. And then you will, you will lose all this energy. You will curse yourself, curse yourself. They probably kick you out. You're probably up in the rescue mission, walking down the street, man. They got all your energy, man. And when you sit down and think about it, 
they probably said something that was true, but they just twisted it in the in a different way. Now, if you always walking around high and drunk and not with with the most high, then they could use this on you all day, man. The solution again is forgiven. Now you're supposed to forgive your enemies. Now you're really supposed to be forgiving your mama if you're gonna forgive your enemy. How can't you forgive your mama and your daddy, man? You gotta be forgiving them, man, along with your enemies and all of that. You gotta forgive them. You gotta take deep breaths, man, and clip your fists and about face and just walk away if you if you cuss your parents out, then it could be it could be fatal, man. Look, it's better to cuss me out. You hear what I'm saying? It's better to cuss Donald Trump out than to cuss out your parents, man. Forget, forget. That's the only way that you can get these narcissistic parents, man. That's the only way. You never even know if it's a trap or not. But as soon as you start disrespecting them and taking it out in your own on your own, then the most high is going to curse you, man. So what happens when you just walk away and you stop communicating on the phone like that and all of that? What happens when you when you release it all? I'm not talking about cutting them off. I have a solution for narcissists that's a little different than than a lot of the other nar- narcissist people. I don't even specialize in narcissists, but I got a lot of you know what I'm saying experience with them, and I I don't cut them off completely. A hundred percent. I do gray rock. I don't put my emotions and all of that type of stuff up in it. Nah, once I know they're a narcissist, that's over with. But it ain't like I change my number, block them and do all of that. If they want to call, they could call. I might be taking the rest of their energy if they if they act up. You know what I'm saying? Like there's there's like lion tamers. There's people who know how to deal with tigers and and rattlesnakes and stuff. So I don't just cut them all off because some of them you can't cut off because some of them in your damn family. So what happens when you start doing this gray rock and you walk away and you live your life? Something sad is going to happen, man. They gonna start needing you, especially if you was the empath, the golden sheep. I don't wanna say black sheep no more. Especially if you was the golden sheep, man. Then you was nine times out of 10, the alternator for that whole family, man. And this is why a lot of your energy was being suppressed because it was like they were siphoning it. They needed to keep you suppressed because the moment you figure that you the one is controlling this whole show, you're going to become like Brightburn. You hear what I'm saying? When Brightburn realized that everything was a lie and all of that, you see what Brightburn did, man. God forbid any body do what Brightburn did. I'm talking about taking your power back, man. Once you take your power back and you separate yourself from them, even if your body is there, your energy not there like that, you still separate it, man. When you don't have no emotion, then everything starts to crash down on them, man. Because you was holding it up. You hear what I'm saying? It's always that one in the family. Sometimes it be the grandmama. Sometimes it be the great, great grandfather. And sometimes it be you. And nine times out of 10, this person is the one that's going to be the scapegoat, the golden sheep. 
So when you take back your power, when you stop yelling and jumping around and cursing yourself and all of that stuff, when you figured it out and you forgave and you forgot all of that stupid stuff and you moved on, then everything is going to start crashing down on them. You was absorbing all of their damn karma, man. This this gets deep. This chosen golden sheep. It gets deep, man, how much power we have. And a lot of these families, they knew it because this is a bloodline thing. They, they knew it. A lot of us out here are descendants of kings and queens and prophets. People in the Bible walking right in your neighborhood, man. That was Moses' nephew, man. You hear what I'm saying? And we get the same gifts. Like your grandma know how to cook. Now your niece know how to cook the potato salad just like she do. It passes down. You hear what I'm saying? And it passed down to you. All of that Moses, Jesus, Abraham stuff, it passed down to us. So Satan had to surround us with narcissists ever since we was babies, man. Just like Jesus. They sent out three narcissists, man. I guess they got the spirit and couldn't do what they was going to do. But he was followed and all that since he was a baby, before he was a baby. With the blood magic and the astrology and stuff before we was even born, man. So there you have it. You're going to want to pray for them. Take deep breaths. Forgive and forget. Because if you don't, then you could be cursed. And they could be orchestrating the curse on you with the way that they, they phrase different things and throwing away or hiding. They will even hide some of your most precious things so you can start snapping. And now you are homeless. But... If you forgive and forget and you walk away, always remember that you're not walking away and it's like they're getting away with nothing. You're actually walking away to allow the most high to do what he about to do. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, and I'll be back at you with another video. Peace.